Kia and welcome everyone to another episode of Big Life Mindset. You know, I'm not really a fan of these shitty life hacks that, you know, get published everywhere. And besides the fact that they only save me like 20 seconds on the off chance I ever remember it, don't really do anything to actually improve my life. Because what I'm after are solid hacks that make big differences for me. What I'm looking for is knowledge and actions that help me perform at my best. Or, another way to look at it, how can I avoid being an overtired, grumpy dad, a shit husband, or an absent friend? So today's episode is about some life hack knowledge and some of the key ingredients I need and I use to supercharge my mental health. Because when I think about the kind of person that I want to be and the aspirations I have in life, it always comes back to my mental health. When I think about the situations I find myself in and the things I'm doing that bring positive experiences to my life, it comes back to my mental health. And when I think about all of those in the context of my life, it actually really surprises me when I ask people about the key things they need for their mental health and they say, I don't know, or simply shrug their shoulders. In my mind, how can something so important so absolutely crucial to your overall health and well-being, have no firm grounding in your mind. So for my mind, there's three absolutely key pillars that I need to have, along with half a dozen supporting ones that contribute significantly to my mental health and my ability to perform at my peak, no matter what habit, no matter what hat I'm wearing. It could be a dad, husband, public speaker, life coach, business owner, blah, 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 whatever. And it's as simple as sleep, sex, and exercise. Sleep, sex, and exercise. Or more accurately, sleep, intimacy, and exercise. Sleep is always the number one. And depending on my situation in life at the time, intimacy and exercise can rotate around, but sleep is always king. Now, for me, good quality sleep has almost always been a battle. My sleep hygiene sucks. I very rarely go to bed at the same time each night, and sometimes I can be staring at my phone seconds before I'm meant to go to sleep. Also, having four kids means you know we're often woken by a nappy that needs changing, or someone's had a bad dream, or someone's coughing in the house, and I'm not even going to go into the noises that I have to deal with from the other side of the bed. Sleep for me. It's more about the quality than the quantity. Because I can get away with six hours, sometimes five, sometimes even four, if the quality of it is amazing. On the other hand, I've lost track of the times I've had eight, nine, or even ten hours of broken, disturbed sleep and woken up feeling way worse than when I'd gone to bed. But no matter what, I have to prioritize sleep in my top three. Because I find when I've slept well, I wake up, and I honestly feel like a different person. Like, wow, is this what I'm meant to feel like? Because if you know me, you'd know that I'm the grumpiest guy in the world when I haven't slept well, especially if I'm pre-coffee. The opposite of good sleep really amuses me. Because there's been so many times in my life where our kids have made me so sleep deprived that I've thought, oh man, I couldn't possibly operate on any less sleep. And lo and behold, there it is. And somehow you survive. It does make me laugh, though, at all the decisions that are being made out there by chronically sleep-deprived parents. Like, seriously, we really shouldn't be put into those kinds of positions. Sex, or intimacy, is another thing that gives me a massive boost in life. I try to describe it as intimacy, not just sex, because it's often the little things that feel good. You know, a gentle touch on the back of the hand in public, or spooning at night watching TV. But really, at some stage, all the spooning in the world is not going to substitute for having sex. And I can't speak for anyone else, but sooner or later, if I haven't had sex in a while, my mind is going to focus on it, and it makes it the highest of priorities. It's kind of like being hangry, but sex instead of food. Sangry? Yeah, legit. The key to all this, though, is far beyond the fun that comes with banging, excuse the pun, um, because I have an association between being intimate with Debbie and the strength or depth of our connection to each other. 
I think part of it comes from being in a relationship where we both view sex as an integral part of our relationship. Otherwise, once that's removed, we'd be friends with children. And while that's cool, it's definitely not as cool as the first option. Exercise is the third key foundation for my mental health. As with the previous two, I've really learned a lot about how important it is to me over the course of years and with a lot of trial and error. Right now, I'm getting stacks of it. Swimming twice a week and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu four, maybe five times a week. This amount is probably at the high end of the scale for me, of spectrum for me, and I expect it to shift around a bit over the next couple of months. But no matter what, I know that I need to be doing something physically active. And I tend to like doing things that are intense, highly draining activities as well, because I find that they're the ones that filter out all of that life admin noise. You know, answering the next email, wondering what you're going to cook for dinner, hanging out the washing, all those bits and pieces that just kind of are noisy. And I find that the boost that I can get from some sort of physical exertion can set me up for the day and sometimes a whole week. I only mention those though because they give me a boost, knowing that's what I'm throwing myself at. But in all honesty, I get a similar mental coffee from doing a 20 minute walk with Debbie in the mornings, or play fighting with our son, or walking my ass down to the shops instead of driving. So if there's a physical aspect to it, I'll likely get the endorphin release that I'm looking for. Sleep, sex, exercise. My key three to mental health. Now, I did mention a few more things which contribute, which I'll share, but I'll cover those more another day. And those are savoring, gratitude, service, and meditation. Now, most of my audience are adults, and you've probably given some thought to being happy or having energy or feeling good about yourself. You've no doubt heard about mental health, and for some of you, it's super easy to talk about, while for many others, you'd rather avoid the topic entirely. I totally get it. What I've found is that it's critical for me to knowing exactly what keeps my brain in good shape and keeps my outlook on life where I want it to be. If I'm feeling down or find myself focusing on the negatives or I'm just not performing at the level that I want to be, then I quickly look at at those top three and I ask myself, am I getting the right quality and quantity of each? No shit, I can almost always see that I'll be lacking in one, if not two of them. And that's actually a recent finding for me as well. Because I used to think that all I needed, sorry, I used to think that I needed all three of them to be operating at their peak in order for me to feel like I can take over the world. But I've since found that, for a short time at least, I can attack life with gusto if only two of them are at the levels that I'd be hoping for. My challenge for you today is to reflect on what I've said and my three key pillars to my mental health. Now, think about what your ones might be. If it helps, think about the times in your day or week when you feel like you're kicking ass in life or you're just having a good time. It could be through social connections. It could be by doing something that adds a lot of value to others. It could be a lot of variety in the activities that you're involved in. Or they could be the same as mine. That's cool. Whatever they are, write them down or put them into your phone. And that's it. Challenge done. In some upcoming podcasts, I'll share practical, everyday things I do to ensure that I'm getting the right amount and the right quality of sleep, intimacy and exercise. Plus, I'll dive into some of those other examples that I mentioned, like savoring, which are really helpful too. All right, family, all good. As always, please remember to click follow. And if you're enjoying these, give them a five star review. And please do share it with at least one other person so hopefully we can spread the word around. All right, peace out.